Welcome into the On3 studios here in Nashville, Tennessee. It is the Inside Scoop. Now, we had a busy week of recruiting, and I'm here to break it all down for you, so let's just get into it. But first, make sure you guys are subscribed to the On3 Recruits channel, because April 1st, we have big news coming. That's tomorrow. Hit subscribe. All right. Let's start with this weekend's major developments, and I have identified four of them. Starting here with Ohio State's Commitment Weekend. Yes, four commitments in three days, and here's who got it going. Linebacker TJ Alford, Edge London Merritt, wide receiver Desi Jones, and cornerback Deshaun Stewart. Now, there could be more to come. We are going to talk to Matt Parker from Letterman Row about that. But, you know, maybe even more importantly for Ohio State's weekend, they got number one offensive tackle David Sanders on campus. His first trip to Columbus this cycle. So let the games begin for the Buckeyes and the number one offensive tackle. Remember last year, they made a run at Jordan Seaton last season. Came up a little bit short with Jordan Seaton, but this year, Circle David Sanders because he is the prize for Buckeye fans when it comes to offensive line recruiting. And I got to imagine the atmosphere up in Columbus was pretty hype with all those commitments. Got to see what he says coming out of that one. But from here moving forward, I would consider Ohio State a major player for David Sanders. All right. Uh, Julian Lewis back at USC. That's a major development coming off the recruiting surge that the Trojans got last weekend. Remember that they got four commitments over the last week. USC this weekend gets five-star QB Juju Lewis back on campus. And it was big because it was a four day unofficial visit, which means we know that he's going to return for an official, at least one more return trip, at least one more return trip. And remember the last time Juju was on campus, he was the only commitment in this class. He was on campus about two months ago, and he, like I said, he was the only commit in USC's 2025 class. This time, there were five commitments when he walked on campus, and while he was there, USC picked up another one, running back Riley Wormley from South Lake Carroll High School in Texas, 5'10", 170-pound speedster. He committed. He's the only other offensive commitment in the 2025 class, but certainly not the last, so... What does it mean for Juju Lewis and USC, the team that he's committed to? Well, I think it's a great sign. Basically, USC kind of holding serve here. With all these visits taking place, it was very important for me to see Juju Lewis back in L.A., and he was this weekend. Now, we know he's going to continue to take more trips. That's not going to hurt USC's chances right now to sign him as long as they keep getting him back on campus, and I think they will. All right, the next major development we got to talk about, Ole Miss. They landed the number two running back in America on Saturday. And, you know, Lane Kiffin, he's just not the portal king. When he wants to, he can really recruit the high school level when he wants to. And this weekend, he wanted to because Deere is the number two ranked running back in America and the 34th best player overall. So it's 6'1", 200 pounds. We're talking borderline five-star recruit, and it wasn't an easy win for Ole Miss. Alabama, Florida, Florida State, Georgia, Oregon, Texas. You want me to keep going? Tennessee, Penn State, Miami, Stanford, USC, Texas A&M. They were all involved. They all offered. Shout out to Lane Kiffin, who lands Aikland Deer, the number two running back in America. Now, we always see a couple big wins like this from Ole Miss, but right now they have some recruiting momentum. Let's see what Lane Kiffin can do with it with the spring game coming up. We know there's going to be more visitors on campus. Can Ole Miss capitalize? All right, the next major development is Matt Zollers closing in on this final decision. Over the weekend, four-star quarterback Matt Zollers was at Penn State. On Bama, or I'm sorry, but on Monday, he'll be at Alabama. And Tuesday, he'll be in Athens. Then on Thursday, he's going to make a final decision. So April 4th will be when Matt Zollers decides. Missouri and Pitt are also involved. Uh, Zollers... Zoller's decision will impact the QB dominoes. We talk a lot of QB dominoes on this channel. And who's it going to impact? Well, mostly Juju Lewis's recruitment. Yes, I know he's committed to USC, but let's say Matt Zoller's commits to Georgia. I think that's one major threat off the board for USC, and it helps them hold on to Juju Lewis. Now, if Matt Zoller's commits to another program, say he commits to Pitt, Penn State, Missouri, well, now UGA, I think, is going to crank it up for Juju Lewis and also Ryan Montgomery. So like I said, if UGA misses on Zollers, does Georgia turn the heat up for Montgomery and Juju Lewis? Because that would impact what UF and South Carolina are doing. It could impact Auburn, Alabama, Colorado. 
Lots going to happen when Zoller decides on Thursday. What do you guys think? Let's talk about it. Who had the biggest weekend? Where do you guys think Matt Zowers is going to ultimately end up when he commits on Thursday? Does Juju Lewis stick with USC or does he flip? How do we feel after this four-day visit? Comment section below. All right. We got a big show. Let's talk some Ohio State Buckeyes and Georgia Bulldogs, and let's get to it. Ohio State, they got to it this weekend. The Buckeyes have been on a run, four commits in three days. And in this video, we're going to find out how Ohio State was able to put it all together and make such a big splash over the weekend. And more importantly, are they done? I got Matt Parker from Letterman Row on this one to break it all down. But first, Ohio State fans, these are exciting times. Make sure you are subscribed to the On3 Recruits channel. We got more Buckeye coverage and news to come. But first, uh, let's bring on Matt Parker from Letterman Row and Matt, it was a big weekend. We got TJ Alford committed, London Merritt committed, Desi Jones committed, and lastly, Deshaun Stewart committed. Uh, what went right for OSU to kind of line it up like this and land so many recruits over this specific weekend? I think it's a little bit of a two-pronged answer here, Josh. You look at uh, London Merritt and TJ Alford, those are two guys that Ohio State has been recruiting for quite a while now. I mean, TJ Alford, you and I have talked about him at length, the relationship with James Laurinaitis. We previewed his recruitment. I said, I felt it was going to be Ohio State. And sure enough, it was London Merritt. The timing of it was a bit interesting for me. Uh, I had felt like the Buckeyes were in pole position for that one for a while now, um, especially with the coaching changes at Alabama. Once Nick Saban retired, I think you saw Alabama, who was right up there with Ohio State, uh, right before Saban retired, kind of took a backseat here, and then Ohio State just took advantage of that opportunity, as as every other program has tried to do in the college football landscape here. Uh, the relationship with London Merritt and Larry Johnson, Ohio State's defensive line coach. I mean, Ohio State has been recruiting London Merritt for going on three years at this point. So the the, the longevity, the understanding, at least for London Merritt, that for now, Larry Johnson isn't going anywhere, and he said that, uh, at a press conference this past week at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center here in Columbus. So just mm -hmm. those those two right there is just an example of longevity, faith in relationships right there, or having faith in those relationships, I should say. And then you go out to New Jersey, teammates Desi Jones and Deshaun Stewart, um, who were both on campus in, within the last week. Stewart was on campus two weeks ago. Desi Jones actually was on campus this past weekend. He was supposed to visit the same weekend that Stewart did, but some traveling snafus out of the Garden State. He wasn't able to make it to campus. But we'll start it with Stewart, the most recent commit um, in the last three days. Um, <laughs> start with Stewart. New, new safeties coach Macareri has, in, in a short amount of time, Josh, put a lot of stock in the guys that he is recruiting. One of those guys being Deshaun Stewart. The Buckeyes went out to New Jersey to Paul Catholic, and it was a contingent of Ryan Day, and Tim Walton, and Brian Hartline, who was also out there, and we'll get to that in just a second. That trio of Ohio State uh, coaches were out there at DePaul Catholic in January during the winter contact period, extended an offer to Stewart, and then locked in an unofficial visit for March. Sure enough, he shows up, raves raves about the visit uh, with Letterman Rose, Alex Gleitman, about Ohio State being able to be around Ryan Day and Matt Carreri, and Sometimes kids just know, you know, that that's uh, yeah. very rare. Is that how it happens anymore? But sometimes kids just know. Uh, Deshaun Stewart wasted no time pulling the trigger on Ohio State. And then looking at Desi Jones, that's where Brian Hartline comes in, making that same visit with Day and Walton in January. Although it should be noted that Desi Jones has had an Ohio State offer for, for a little bit now. He got offered in September of 2023. And Ohio State has been... You know, that's a guy that's been on their board. And I think we saw we saw the Javon Boggs decommitment last week. That opens up a spot. We talked yeah. about how Ohio State is trending for all of these big-time national guys. And, you know, you look at the recruiting rankings and where Desi Jones is at, and maybe, you know, he's not the highest-ranked guy for, you know, across all yeah. industry platforms. But it, it, it's pretty simple to me, Josh. If Brian Hartline thinks he's good enough to play wide receiver at Ohio State, he's pretty good, right? That's pretty simple for me. I've adopted that policy. And as much, again, as I love <laughs> Charles Power and Cody Belair, I'm going to go with what Brian Hartline thinks about a wide receiver. Yeah, trust in Hartline. That's all, that's all you got to do. Um, 
Ohio State entered the weekend number one in the on three industry rankings. They exit the weekend number one in the on three industry rankings. And they had some other big names on campus that I want to talk about. Two I really want to hit on are number one offensive tackle, David Sanders, and the number four ranked wide receiver in America, Jamie French. Uh, what are your sources saying on how Ohio State did this weekend with these two top targets? Well, let's start off with David Sanders, who is an absolute top priority target for yeah. Ohio State, regardless of position, regardless of side of the ball. It, it doesn't matter. David Sanders has to be the number one guy that Ohio State is chasing in this 2025 cycle. And, you know, just talking with some folks after his visit, uh, he left Columbus Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, something like that. Uh, Ohio State needs to be taken seriously in this race, Josh. Um, you, we've talked about this a little bit here, but Alabama and Clemson and Tennessee and Georgia, those are all schools that are in the mix here. And, you know, David Sanders is, is has been loving those schools, and but now he's loving on the Buckeyes. Right. It's really time to start taking Ohio State seriously. He got to spend a lot of time with offensive line coach Justin Fry, head coach Ryan Day, offensive line GA Mike Saletti, but also he spent a lot of time Saturday during practice with Ohio State offensive tackle commit Carter Lowe and then five-star quarterback commit Tavian St. Clair. Those two were following David Sanders around the Woody Hayes Athletic Center like, like nobody's business, just in his ear all the time, pointing things out, pointing out other recruits that were on campus. Uh, Ohio State had a bunch of alums on campus, including uh, Luke Whipler, who's now playing center for the Cleveland Browns. So uh, I believe Paris Johnson's mom was at Ohio State this past weekend. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if she didn't say anything to David Sanders or to his family. So there was a big, big effort by Ohio State to put themselves on notice for David Sanders and show Sanders and his family that playing football and getting an education at Ohio State is a real thing and it should be taken seriously. And, and now it is. So that recruitment is heating up. The Buckeyes are making things interesting in that race. Now, uh, Jamie French was another one. I saw he got to spend a lot of time with Coach Day. I mean, we already know he's got a great relationship with Brian Hartline. This was far from his first trip to Columbus, unlike David Sanders, who they were kind of rolling out the red carpet for the first time. So what were they trying to accomplish with Jamie French over the weekend? I think to just really solidify that, you know, You've gone through this process to its entirety once when he committed to Alabama in July of 2023. Mm -hmm. But now that commitment is obviously not there anymore. He decommitted, has reopened up his recruitment. And Ohio State, th this kind of reminds me a little bit of Brandon Ennis and how he had committed to Oklahoma initially um, when Lincoln Riley was still there. And now, you know, he took a step back, reopened things up, and now he's expected to have a very big year for Ohio State in his second season with the program. That's kind of the same track that this recruitment is moving for Ohio State, where, you know, a guy that was a priority target, you know, went somewhere else. And now Ohio State, affectionately known as, you know, wide receiver you by some, yeah. um, they, they made a strong pitch this weekend. And I don't know if you saw any of the photos on social media, but let me just name off a couple of Ohio State alums that were on campus this weekend. You had Chris Olave, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, Cam Babb, a very important program guy for Ohio State. Xavier Johnson was there. And then, of course, you have the entire current Ohio State wide receiver room. And, you know, Jamie French saw Jeremiah Smith do Jeremiah Smith things in an Ohio State jersey. Um, there's very real tracking for Jeremiah Smith to have a serious role for Ohio State as a true freshman. And that's one of the things that Jamie French has been watching in regards to Ohio State is what is Jeremiah Smith's development and, and his role as a true freshman is going to look like. Now, obviously, those two wide receivers are not the same because right. very respectfully, no wide receiver is Jeremiah Smith, uh, quite honestly. But that stuff matters. And it was just being on campus, seeing how a practice works, seeing how coaches interact, just just more of the same for Jamie French and for Ohio State to show that consistency and that went a long way this weekend, Josh. Now, I think Ohio State is going to have to survive another round of visits. I think there is going to be some, you know, maybe more unofficial visits, even a few official visits. But I've had a prediction in the on three recruiting prediction machine for Ohio State to land Jamie French for about a month now. And I still think the Buckeyes are going to get it done.
Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There's going to be many more visits to come for Jamie French, but I do think it was important for him to be in Columbus this past weekend. Now, uh, we teased at the top, are they done? So I wanted to ask you, who do you think, and don't hold out on us now, who do you think could be the next to commit to Ohio State? So I'm going to go, it's a two-pronged approach. We talked about this a little bit before we started recording here. But I'm going to go a two-pronged approach. And I'm, my first choice here is, I think Ohio State is in a really good position to flip a bit of an under-the-radar guy. The three-star safety out of Cleveland, Ohio, plays in St. Ignatius High School. is named Cody Haddad, currently committed to Wisconsin and Luke Fickle. Uh, has been on campus three times now um, since January. He visited just a few days after he committed to Wisconsin, and now he was on campus uh, two weeks ago, made two unofficial visits to Ohio State. Uh, I just think Ohio State is doing a lot of really good things there to keep the in-state guy at home. But if it's not going to be Cody Haddad, I do. I, I have. A, I just have this feeling, Josh, that finally Ohio State is going to be able to get four-star uh, safety Fahim Delane out of Good Counsel out there in Maryland. I, I just feel like that's going to happen soon. It just feels like it's about to happen. He was at LSU uh, a week ago. He's been to Oregon. He's been to Texas. And but Ohio State has always remained, in my opinion, and in my you know reporting, Ohio State has always been in the driver's seat for Delay. Uh, he's been the top priority safety in the 2025 cycle since about 2022. Yeah, um, which is insane. Even with a position coach change with Perry Eliano leaving and Matt Guerrero coming in. Ohio State has never stopped recruiting him as hard as it possibly can. And, and in between that gap of safety coaches, Ryan Day was really instrumental in that. Jim Knowles, defensive coordinator, was really inter- or, uh, instrumental in that. Uh, it was Student Appreciation Day at Ohio State, and there were some signs that the students made for Fahim Delane to like come to Ohio State. That's that's pretty impressive. Like, I don't. That's you know I'm not going to play like a super major factor in it, but. Kids love that kind of attention. I mean, there's, there's yeah. no denying that. Uh, and I I just think Ohio State is going to get that done sooner rather than later. Mm. All right. Well, like I said, after four commitments in three days, there could be more to come. Matt Parker, you guys do a phenomenal job of covering all things recruiting and Ohio State football over on Letterman Row. Going to be a busy couple weeks over there. Appreciate you stopping by the inside scoop after a massive recruiting weekend. Thanks for having me, Josh. Appreciate it as always. Is Georgia closing in on landing a top-tier QB? We got UGA insider Rusty Mansell on the show. He's going to tell us more about the Dogs' QB situation. Also, it's been a week since Justice Terry flipped his commitment from Georgia to USC. I want to know if Kirby is still going to pursue the five-star defensive lineman. And finally, priority offensive line target Mason Short is set to make a final decision later this week. Will it be the dogs? That's why we got Rusty out. He's going to tell us everything we need to know. But first, UGA fans, don't miss out on any of these recruiting nuggets. Make sure you're subscribed to the On3 Recruits channel. Lock in right now for me. Okay. Let's bring on Rusty Mansell from Dogs HQ. Rusty, I said it. It's been one week since UGA fans woke up to the big news when five-star Justice Terry flipped to USC. Uh, What's been going on over the course of the last week? Has there been any contact? And do you think that he's going to come back to campus now that he's committed to USC. Oh, definitely will be back on campus. Uh, Jeremy Johnson confirmed uh, that he would be back on campus at some point. And I think most people, even the USC fan base, would probably think, yeah, he's going to be back on campus. But that, I was told the next day there was communication between George's staff, him, his parents. Uh, Kirby Smore has been there and done this before. They're not They're not just going to quit. You know, that, it doesn't matter where you go, like USC – wouldn't recruit him because he was committed to George. This is going to be a long one. It's going to be a big battle. Uh, certainly a major, major target for Georgia. Committed there for a year already. And uh, this, one, this one will be one to watch as it goes and certainly expect him on campus in Athens multiple times over the next few months. Yeah. Another one to watch is I get Isaiah Gibson, the elite edge right in Georgia's backyard, committed to USC along with Justice Terry last weekend. And this weekend he was in Gainesville. So is it kind of the yeah. same deal with him? Do you expect him to be back on campus? Yeah, I think Isaiah Gibson will be in Athens Elite a couple of times as well. And he was like he was like you just said, he was already in Gainesville on a visit to Florida. <laughs> he's been committed, verbally committed for a week. You know how these things go. June will be very important for these official visits, see kind of where these kids are, kind of reset the summer. But I do expect Isaiah Gibson and Justice Terry in Athens at least a couple of times 
uh, between now and the end of July. All right. Now the QB board, it's about to get interesting because Georgia is going to get the final pitch to quarterback Matt Zowers. Now that'll be on Tuesday. Now the, the four-star QB was at Penn State over the weekend. He'll be at Bama tomorrow, Monday, and then Georgia on Tuesday. And then he's going to make his decision on Thursday. So we're about a week out, give or take. So what are you hearing when it comes to Matt Zollers and where he fits in in this UGA QB board? I tell you what, man, I've made a lot of calls on him this weekend. I've talked to a lot of people in the On3 network. I just got off the phone with our Penn State insider, Sean Fitz, right before I shot this video uh, talking to him. And I, the one consistent thing is I don't think anybody really knows. And I don't think this young man's decision is final right now. Uh, I know that Missouri set the bar really high on their visit, had a really good visit with his family. They finished up a visit with Penn State this weekend. I heard that one well. They'll be at Alabama on Monday and Georgia on Tuesday. If you want to look for any positive, Georgia gets the last shot at him. They get the last face-to-face contact with him before he makes his decision on Thursday. So how's this thing going to go? I don't think anybody knows right now, but I do think Georgia has done a really good job of showing him he's a priority. Mike Bobo went up there and offered him on the spot in person after watching him throw at a workout at the school. So we'll see how this week goes. But I, Josh, I'm pretty confident right now that, that nobody really knows where he's going outside of that household. So, uh, what he does on Thursday could impact other p- prospects, including oh, Ryan Montgomery. It's going, it's going, uh, yes. Most notably, Juju Lewis. So, yeah. whatever happens, let's say if uh, Matt Zollers commits to Georgia or doesn't commit to Georgia, does that affect the way Georgia recruits Juju Lewis moving forward? Let me ask you, let me tell you this on a bigger picture. This is the, one of the first big dominoes that falls in the quarterback board. Wherever he goes, it's going to change boards for different schools. Right. If Georgia gets Matt Zollers, obviously, I, I, I would think this chances of Slam they end up with Juju Lewis because I, these two kids are. Uh, and Juju Lewis is committed to USC as well. So I do think this for several schools and everybody is involved, this is a major quarterback domino in the 2025 class when he makes this decision. Yeah, because it's not just going to affect Penn State, Bama, uh, Pitt. I mean, Missouri, Florida, South Carolina, Colorado, everybody is going to feel the effects of the decision of Matt Zollers one way or another. So, like you said, really interesting getting down to this one. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, what's that, Rusty? It's a big domino here. There's a lot of quarterbacks. The boards are going to shift play when this decision goes down and uh, it's going to trickle down on some other quarterbacks for their decisions. So it'll be interesting to see how this one ends at, at, uh, later this week. All right. Speaking of later this week, the last thing I want to talk to you about interior offensive lineman, the number 13 ranked interior offensive lineman in America, top 250 overall Mason short who decommitted from Alabama after the Nick Saban retirement. He'll make his second final announcement this Friday. Where does Georgia stand in this one? I like where George is right now. Uh, I haven't talked to Mason Britt. You know, I don't have a story it's where he's going. I just talked to a lot of people around him. And this really got down to a Georgia Clemson battle, which has really been Matt Luke versus State. I told you about a month ago, there's going to be a lot. There's a lot of common battles going on with those two guys for some prospects. This will be one of the first decisions made. And just talking to people close to him, talking to people at Evans High School, I think Georgia's in a really good spot right now. Uh, going into this decision, and I know that Georgia really never let up on him. Even when he committed to Alabama, he was in he was in Athens for multiple visits. They never really let off and uh, let off of him. And we'll see if it pays off later this week for the Bulldogs. Yeah, a a really formidable week. I'm not going to say make or break is way too early for to do a make or break week for Georgia, but with Matt Zoller's decision on Thursday, Mason Short coming off the board on Friday. When we get to Saturday, we're going to know a lot more about the direction of this UGA recruiting class come Saturday after the dust settles a little bit. What a week to be locked into Dogs HQ. Uh, Rusty Mantell, appreciate your time today on the Inside Scoop. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed that, go check out the hundreds of videos that we have on this channel. And also, do me a favor, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel.